And we have a one, a two, a three, and a hey now, a subdued shout out from the bunker. Metal Mike, Saturday morning video. Can you believe it? But I'm motivated. That's right, I'm motivated because of all the positive energy that I've been receiving from the people that watch my videos. So I'm shooting videos as much as possible. F it. Let's go for it. Let's give you uh, from the bunker. So what's the uh, speech about today? I'm gonna. I, it's it's a type of dealer or picker that is out there that you have to be aware of if you are a seller or buyer or collector, whatever category that you fall into. And let me explain because I'm one of them. And what is that exactly? So let's get to the the meat on the bone of this conversation in this video. It's early. Uh, Saturday morning and I'm on Craigslist and I'm, I'm combing through hundreds of pictures scrolling lost on the computer just scrolling looking for something that has slipped through the cracks remind you and, and remember there's 8,000 other million people doing it as well at the same time on the same page so you're just trying to scroll hoping somebody missed something that you see something somebody else does not uh, my stepfather Gilbert Marty look him up I've got videos with him on it when he was still alive, rest in peace. Uh, he used to always tell me, you can't know it all. Most guys generally will pick one thing specifically. And of course there are pickers that pick everything. But they're never smart enough to get it all. There is always something they're going to miss. It's human error. A uh, human will make a mistake. It's on your side. It's in... Uh, your bag of ammunition to feed your own mind about how easy it is to get out there and find something. This is the last of the gold rush. It is out there. there all the gold is out there waiting for you to find it. You can go find it. Do not let them beat you down and tell them, oh, it's disappearing. It's not out rare. It's not. You can find it. And so I'm on Craigslist and I'm scrolling and scrolling and I'm looking at things. And uh, finally I come across a guy that has a soda sign for sale and it says, Dad's soda sign. Next to it I notice another sign. And behind that I notice some other items. So I immediately contact him. I, I know that he's local. Uh, I send him a text. I reach out to him. I said, I'd like to set, schedule a time to come out. I see some things in the background. Knowing all along that this is kind of a bait and switch move. So this is done purposely. They picture the one item and in the background they pepper it with gorgeous treats that are going to tempt you and pull you in. Uh, and, it's, and, and there's all different aspects to it. And so his response to me immediately was back, are you a collector? I said, yeah, I am a collector because I am. I wrote, I love advertising. Because um, I'm looking for myself is what this is all about. Sure, I do sell. Sure, I do trade some things occasionally. Um, but that is simply to uh, upgrade my collection of the junk that I like to have. And uh, so I, I write, I'm a collector. So he goes, do you have any pictures of your collection? Hilarious. Okay, you just showed your cards. And what does that mean? He's, he's not only trying to sell stuff, he's picking. <laughs> so now he's trying to see my collection. So this is a, a typical uh, move that is um, a sly move. It, it is part of the game of the picker. Uh, the ones that will use any uh, way to get into a situation. Guilty. I've done it. You know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, I guess what am I guilty of? Let's analyze that for a second. Guilty of having the passion and trying to convince someone to let me buy it from them. And uh, that's the reality of it. And we're not talking million dollar pieces. We're not finding those pieces. I'm not. If I find one like that, that'd be golden. Uh, most of my treasure was built in the dumpsters, old houses, estate cleanouts. But I have been around dealers my entire life. And I have sadly, in many ways, I used some of the same tactics. So... Is it bad what he did? No, not at all. But just to be aware of it, because number one, you don't know who this person is. You don't want to take a bunch of pictures of your collection and then show them to a stranger. That's a dumb move. Even if you're trying to buy something, they have something you're going to buy from them. Uh, I refrain from it. There's no reason to be showing your stuff at all uh, if it's your private collection. Because these guys are pickers. Uh, there was one guy that used to let me clean up after he would do estate sales. And 
would give me amazing stuff. But then he came, well, he stopped by my house one day to say hi. And uh, it, was, it was deeper than that, though, because he was like, so he came into the house. But as we talked, all he's doing, he's picking. He's looking at my, and he's examining stuff. And he, it's a very interesting, funny part of it. He gravitated to three or four different pieces at my home. And this could have been all sham by him, but he totally looked like he was interested in me. He's like, what about this piece? Is this for sale? And I go, no. And I was like, you actually gave me that. Because he would let me do, he did real high-end uh, estate clean-outs. This was back in like 2000. And uh, he would allow me to come in and anything left over, I could just have it. And I scored some really cool shit a few times. Anyway. Getting back to it, I just thought it was interesting, that tactic. You know, immediately it went from me trying to buzzard him, pick him and buy stuff, to he's flipped it. Now he's asking to see my collection, which I don't have. I, I, I'm i looking for a, a cool piece to hang on my cabin out back. Something really special. I'm trying to find something really freaking old and desirable. But to me, the more salty and relic it is, the better. Because I don't want some expensive, rare, big, giant sign hanging on my uh, property because someone will probably steal it. But a nice old relic one, there's a chance they'd cut their fingers at least when they're trying to do it on the rusty edges. So, we're deep in the bunker. That's right. As I swear my horrible camera action. I just picked these up not too long ago at the flea market and I just love them. Back in the 1970s when I was a kid and I frequented the thrift stores with my mother, and my father. What did I get them for? Two dollars. Can't go wrong, right? I scooped those up. But uh, when I was a kid in the 70s, you could find these at the thrift stores by the bucket loads. These are very early and brutally dangerous football cleats. Um, so I always had them. I had ones with giant metal tabs on them that were satanic. And I would wear them. <laughs> I'd play lot football in the dirt fields, but whatever they've dry, they have dried up. And so when you buy a pair of uh, leather high tops with giant spikes on them like that, but that's rad. And then for two dollars, woo! Am I crazy? You betcha. I like the junk. I love it. I like to find it better than anything. There's nothing better than finding something on the curb or in a dumpster. That's the pure passion that I love. That's what I love. This is the this is the very low end of the bunker that you're seeing into. This is kind of where just the family junk is kind of in, and just stuff that, you know, oh, paperwork. I've got to get rid of all this uh, old magazines, books, videos. I just want it all gone. So that's just the low end of the low end. Got lots of stuff like that. Lots of junk. Why am I whispering? I don't know because my daughter's home and I don't want her to be entertained. Here, I've got a Nerf football. Vintage! Found this. Very interesting story. I was driving down the street. Thought i seen a pile of junk by the curb. Quick pulled over. Um, got out. Was walking towards it. And then noticed it said, uh, to charity on it or something. So I was spinning on my heel. I was like, oh, no score. Because you can't touch that stuff. That's a donation. Um, so I spun on my heel, I was going back into my car, and this old man came down out of the house just as I'm spinning on my heel. And he looks at me, and he's like wondering what I want. And I was like, I thought you were throwing this stuff out. I go, I see it's for charity, no problem. And he looks at me, he goes, ah, oh, you could take anything. So I went over there, and I scored a couple things. I, I found a really cool vintage mid-century um, stool, doctor's office stool. That is really rad and is going to clean up. And he let me take that. And then I got this, a beautiful vintage Nerf. Parker Brothers official. Purple and green and not a hole on it. No one has bitten it. No one has punctured it. And it's soft. It's pliable. I ripped my shoulder out. My shoulder is destroyed because of one of these. In my early 20s, me and a buddy went to the beach. We were whipping this thing 30, 40 yards. Not this one, but one like it. 30, 40 yards, because you could throw a brutal deep spiral with one of these. I grew up throwing, up throwing them in the 70s and 80s and, as a kid. But whatever. So I ended up ripping my cuff, my rotator cuff, whatever the hell. It was just destroyed for life. Brutal. True story. Everyone have a great day. Metal Mike in the bunker.